BB40 and straight black pride, black family. This is your brother, DC Radical One, with the first ever Radical Report. And today we want to talk about the curious case of Kane Madden. Now, Kane Madden is a European psychopath who has been on the loose in the streets of Kentucky. Now, why is this of interest to us? It is of interest to us because Kane Madden is accused of the rape of an eight-year-old child. And so, this case is currently being adjudicated. The case is over a year old, but this person has not been put away for their entire life. So, let's look at the initial report of this crime and then we'll come back to look at this case further. As soon as this happened, heartbreaking. I just seen her playing with her iPad in the morning time. Hours later, that iPad was gone, stolen, and according to police, the eight-year-old was the victim of a beating so violent her skull was fractured. She had also been sexually assaulted. It happened Friday on Hale Avenue when the girl was sitting on these steps playing with that iPad. The next day, police arrested a man that, according to neighbors, lived nearby in an abandoned house. Mr. Madden has been charged with rape in the first degree, victim under 12 years of age. 29-year-old Kane Madden admitted to beating the girl in the head with a shovel and then raping her. But on Monday, noting Madden had been deemed incompetent in previous cases, a public defender asked for a motion to dismiss. He was released and immediately went out and has now admitted to vaginally raping an eight-year-old child. I will not be doing that. In just four years, Madden was charged in connection to nine crimes, menacing, criminal mischief, burglary, assault, most notably a 2017 arrest where police say he admitted to sexually assaulting a woman, then biting off part of her face. The court found he suffered from behavioral disorders and his low intelligence would keep him from understanding the court process, so he was deemed incompetent and the charges were dismissed. But on Monday, a judge refused to budge on bond. It is going to remain at $1 million. He is a danger to this community. Neighbors like Ruth Watkins argue he's always been a danger and should never have been out and on her street. The system has got to do better than what it's doing for the whole community, not only just here. Kane Madden, as you just heard, remains behind bars tonight on a $1 million bond. He returns to court next week. Reporting for you tonight, I'm Lauren Adams to view LKY News. Now, brothers and sisters, you heard the initial report um, where they talked about his previous crimes. So it's obvious that this person has been a menace to the community for a long time, and yet nothing was done. And as we look at this uh, more detailed report, and we'll get into it further, it says from Louisville, Kentucky, Kane Madden smeared feces on the wall of a psychiatric hospital in LaGrange, Kentucky, spelling out, I will kill her. He also threatened to harm children and animals and said he wanted to kill and then rape. Let's pause right here. This man stated publicly that he wanted to kill and then rape the first female that he comes in contact with. A psychiatrist testified in court. When a Louisville judge found Madden incompetent to stand trial in a violent sexual assault case earlier this year, she asked if prosecutors would try to have him hospitalized. In that case, he was accused of not only sexually, ass sexually assaulting a woman but biting her face, removing a large chunk, according to an arrest report. Circuit Court Judge Annie O'Connell said Madden was a danger to himself and others. He was hospitalized, but not for long. He ultimately went free because he didn't meet Kentucky's criteria for involuntary hospitalization. A law that says, in part, 
people can only be held against their will if they will benefit from treatment, even if they are mentally ill and considered dangerous. Now let's review this paragraph. This man is a complete and total lunatic, right? That's not, I'm not a psychiatrist. This is my personal opinion based upon the facts that have been presented to us thus far. Now, he has previously sexually assaulted a woman biting her face and says that he wanted to kill and then rape, which means if you kill someone, he wants to kill a woman and then rape her dead body. This is what, this is his life aspirations according to the court psychiatrist. And yet this person is allowed to walk free to then later on rape a eight year old child and hit her in the head with a shovel, which he admits to. And now the case is still being adjudicated when in reality, there's nothing to further discuss. And then it says here that people can only be held against their will if they will benefit from treatment. So they're saying that he won't benefit from treatment, but yet he's in a psychiatric hospital and may be allowed to walk out of the psychiatric hospital again, but they're saying there's nothing they can do for him, which means that the people in the community have to do what they have to do to defend themselves from a person that is a complete menace. Now, let's ask ourselves a very simple question. Would Kane Madden be allowed to run around in the community if Kane Madden were a black man and the eight year old girl was a little blonde haired, blue eyed eight year old girl? Let's just take a moment to think about that. I think we all know the answer here. So Kane Madden could possibly be let out to destroy more lives despite admitting to the crime at hand. Now, what we saw earlier was the initial report. We're gonna look at another report to get uh, an update on where the case is currently. Began fracturing the skull of an eight-year-old girl could soon walk free. The judge says she will soon decide whether to rule Kane Madden incompetent to stand trial. Tonight, Gabby Gagat has covered Madden's hearing and talked with a lawmaker who's looking to change a loophole. That is a disaster, a bomb waiting to explode. Community activists are losing faith. So every time when I see him, I think of the failure of our justice system. As a judge decides whether to rule Kane Madden incompetent to stand trial, a man who keeps getting in trouble with the law. And if they don't give justice where it deserves to be at, he's going to get killed or he's going to kill someone else. Madden is accused of raping and cracking an eight-year-old girl's skull in August in Louisville. His attorney argued in court today, Madden's mental health is not going to get any better. Essentially, you have a man who does not understand what's happening. He was ruled incompetent to stand trial in a separate sexual assault case in February 2019. But prosecutors say the 30-year-old needs to be checked again. Do under the statute calls for it for another evaluation and another hearing. Under Kentucky state law, a defendant who's unfit to stand trial should not be tried, convicted, or sentenced as long as the incompetency continues. We've got to close that crack so nobody else falls through it and can hurt people in our community. Senator Morgan McGarvey is not calling it a loophole. He's been working on new legislation that would fix that crack. And then we're also working because it's a budget year to create a facility that's safe enough for people to be and, uh, and for them to get treatment. Under his bill, a defendant like Madden would be appointed a lawyer that would put an emphasis on their well-being. If someone's there advocating, saying, you know what, even though they might not respond to treatment, it's not the best thing to have them out in the community for themselves because they're a danger. He's expecting bipartisan support and says as soon as the governor signs it, there will be an emergency clause. Uh, we expect to have legislation introduced within the next week or so. Madden's next hearing is on March 6th. Sinai Gebregetius, WHES 11 News. Now, brothers and sisters, March 6th was approximately three weeks ago from the time of this recording. And again, we have to ask ourselves, 
because this is something that had, hadn't been discussed in either report or in the document. What proof is there that Kane Madden is not um, using the loophole in the system to continuously get out and continuously reoffend with absolutely no repercussions for his crimes? Like, where is the documentation? How do they know that he doesn't know what's going on? Now, he seems completely lucid enough to say that he wants to rape and kill and murder and torture and all these things, and then he proceeds to go out and do these crimes. So he's literally telling, he's making a plan, he's executing his plan, right? Which is more than many people are able to do in their day. There's a lot of people who are completely sane, who don't plan and they go through life haphazardly, but yet they're not locked up or considered incompetent if you, for, ac for example, happen to have an accident and someone dies. No one's ruled incompetent, but that was not part of your plan. Well, he has made a plan and executed a plan to rape, murder, torture, and all types of other things, right? So we're going to look at a little bit more of this report. Then we're just going to close out this discussion. So it says, after his release, he was arrested again in May for breaking into a business. But a judge dismissed that case earlier this month over the same competency concerns and sent Madden to Central State Hospital in Louisville. And again, he was quickly released, starting the cycle anew. Less than 24 hours later, Madden was accused of raping and assaulting an eight-year-old girl, fracturing her skull with a shovel. So this man was actually in custody in a state mental mental institution less than a day before he went into the black community and raped an eight-year-old black child no alerts or warnings of anything apparently were given to the community and he was just giving free reign to run amok amongst the people and destroy the life of a child nearly killing her and the discussion on the board is for legislation my advice to the people of Louisville Kentucky and we'll follow this case uh, as it goes along but my advice to the people of the community of Louisville Kentucky is to uh, use whatever means they can to defend themselves from this one man crime wave and to exercise their Second Amendment rights if need be. Because it's obvious that the government of Kentucky is either unwilling or unable to defend the people against this type of possibly insane criminal who will admittedly, from his point of view, run around and rape and murder women and children as long as he's allowed to do so. So in a case like this, brothers and sisters, where it's obvious that the lives of black people and women and children in general will not be defended, people are left to defend themselves at all costs. And that, my friends, is the curious case of Cain Madden. And we all know good and well that if Kane Madden was a six foot four, 250 pound black man, that they would find some way to have him locked up and or committed. And that he would probably spend the rest of his days there, especially if the victim, the eight year old girl, was blonde haired, blue eyed, Caucasian female. This is a re reality of the situation. This is where we are again in America. With that, brothers and sisters, I say a BB for ODA and straight black pride. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, follow us on our other social media platforms. On Instagram, we're at dc.radical1. On Twitter, we're at DC underscore radical underscore O N E. And the cash app is dollar sign DC radical the number one. Thank you again.